to make this more of a dialogue instead of you standing at the podium? So you want to come sit up here? Really <coughs> powerful. Really amazing. Uh, we have the, uh, our, get, our helpers are going to hand you the microphone so that we everybody can hear the questions. We've got more on this side. So if you have questions, you can certainly ask Cassie about the movie or uh, about what's going on. I, I just wanted to share there's a whole lot in that movie. So I think you should have watched it first and, and signed up. A couple of things before we get into the question and answer. We do have an evaluation form that um, Cassie and Christina really would like to have so that they get feedback on the film. Um, you can kind of see why they won the cons documentary. Um, so good, good job on that. So do be sure to make sure you have an opportunity to fill out that evaluation. We've got them on clipboards and we're passing them back and forth. So kind of fill them out as we go. Um, the statistics about the only thing I'm going to kind of open it up is about sex education is comprehensive, but they don't explain is what that is, so I thought I'd start with that. Certainly comprehensive sex education starts with abstinence. Um, we know it's the only way you can't get a disease and it's the only way you can't get pregnant. Um, unfortunately, thanks to Clinton, <coughs> a lot of kids don't understand what really is sex. Um, uh, UNR students have twice the STD rates compared to their college mates across the country, and it's mostly because of oral sex. Everybody gets how to use condoms for intercourse, but they're not using it a barrier method for all kinds of sex. So we don't talk to kids about anything but HIV uh, and STD contractions, but not how to get it. So I think we need to really talk to our young people. And comprehensive sex ed talks about all the aspects of what sex is, and then how to handle yourself, how to deal with the peer pressure, how to know what abuse is. Um, so that's why we advocate for comprehensive sex ed. So here, we'll turn over to you and talk about your movie. It's great. Any questions? How hard was it, and how long did it take to be able to find the individuals that you wanted to speak with? Um, and, I mean, were most of them, like, willing to speak to you, or did you have to kind of warm up to them, or how challenging the process was that? Well, basically, everyone that you saw in the film, we interviewed. There were only two people that were not included in the film that we interviewed, and they were in the first edit. Uh, one was a, a Mormon girl who also experienced a lot of sexual abuse and a very proudly and openly promiscuous woman who is very safe and, and was basically our, um, well, female version to the frat boys, but she had a very good head on her shoulders. So we cut those two <laughs> interviews out uh, just for time. But everyone else we included in the film, and, and basically once you find someone who's willing to be interviewed, everyone has a story. Everyone here has a story. And it's not like we're, interviewing 100 people and finding the best story. Every single person has a story. Uh, it's just getting to the bottom of that. And we didn't have a script going into that. We do what we wanted to talk about. We didn't know we wanted to address um, sexual abuse, uh, gangs, you know, all these things that started to come up as a, like a deja vu every time we do an interview. It's like, wow, a lot of people are experiencing these things. So we didn't, you know, foresee where it was going to go. And uh, there were also a lot of things that we wanted to tackle that we didn't find. We didn't find anyone who had an SDI that was willing to talk about it. So I think that goes to show, you know, obviously there are million, was it 57 million people have an STD or 20 million have an STD. Oh. One, in 20, one, in, one in two of people under the age of 25 will have an STD by the time they're 25. So like, you know, every other. So obviously there are people out there that have that story, but no one was wanting to talk about it. Uh, we were very fortunate to have Penny, who was our um, young girl who had the abortion. Uh, she opened up to us and we had no idea that she even had an abortion. So. Um, same with Nicole True, the single mother of five. We didn't know she was sexually abused. So all these things came out when we started interviewing them. Uh, how we found them, which I think you're asking about, is uh, each interview led to the next. So originally, Daddy I Do was just supposed to be about the purity ball. And we thought, oh, cutting edge, you know, no other films been made about this. And 
And when we started getting into it, we realized, I mean, yes, that is a very interesting movement, uh, but it's such a deeper issue in the underlying issues. And um, some people who have seen Daddy I Do say that we raise a lot of questions, but don't give a lot of answers. And that's why we want you guys to talk about it, because I mean, every probably two minutes in the film is a new issue that you could delve into its own feature, you know? Uh, so there's just so many issues, and we, we try to make it very, um, a, a variety of people to find. Um, so yeah, just led along the way, found a new person, new person, and they agreed. We're very fortunate for that, so. Did you want to think? Well, just that. <laughs> uh, I, I'm her sister, my sister. Um, and I was with her at the beginning of the film, and actually the film is, it does kind of go in order of the interviews that Cassie had. So very first interviews that she had were on the abstinence only side in Tennessee. And uh, with McCall's, um, that was really the only interview we had set up in that area. And then he told us to, hey, go check out my campus. I went to school once we went there, found the bad boys <laughs> who were out on the porch with beers at 9 in the morning. <laughs> and from there was, you know, right next door was the pregnancy center. And it started, so it really was just this fluid uh, experience because just the one interview led to the next. And we didn't know anything about the pregnancy care centers until we interviewed that one and started researching it. Uh, just little background story, I did the abstinence programs, uh, so I, I don't know if you caught that little blip in there where I said I had a ring. Oh, right, yeah. So, uh, you didn't answer the question, so. <laughs> <laughs> I try to keep myself out of the film as much as possible, but I, I feel like it is important that you know that the person who's making this film went through that, because I think that is important for where our point of view is coming, but obviously we, we are not that side of it anymore. Um, so we, we could see both sides, and I think maybe if it came off as a fairly balanced film, uh, that's because of our background. Um, but yeah, we didn't know about the pregnancy care centers, and we didn't know exactly the misinformation that Silver Ring thing was promoting. Uh, we could have delved into so much more. We had 12 hours of footage of the Silver Ring thing, so there's just a ton of stories right there. And we had a, you know, like the guy who had the broken hymen on the wedding night story and the Star Wars boys and, and there were probably about a hundred more of those kind of stories. Um, but time wise we maybe if we do a little spin off of the silver ring thing or something. Um, yeah, so it was a journey process and I think we we really learned along the way. Any other questions? Yes. How did you get the parts of the country that you led to? Maybe I stepped out, maybe someone already has asked that, but mm -hmm. Um, we had to work within our means because it was entirely self-financed and uh, not a <laughs> good decision, but for our first film, we kind of had to do it that way because we're willing to uh, practice trial and error through this film, and so we don't want people who are giving us money to see that we didn't know what we're doing. Um, <laughs> so we self-financed it, and, <laughs> and our first interview was in Tennessee, the McCall family, the Perry Ball family. And we found them through the father's blog, who uh, he was talking about the period ball, so we just contacted him and he was very open to talking about it. So that's what led us to flying out to Tennessee. Christine was living in Alabama at the time, so um, that's when she really kind of jumped on the project and came on as producer. And so when we went to Tennessee, we had uh, Matthew Paul Turner, Amy Catherine Flynn, who we found on American Idol. We just contacted her because we saw her on the show right when we started filming. Um, so Matthew Paul Turner, uh, who's the Christian author, he's, he has this very popular <coughs> website now, but when we interviewed him, he wasn't that well known. Uh, but it's JesusNeedsNewPR.com. <laughs> 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 uh, he's a great personality. And, uh, so we found him through his book, um, What You Don't Learn From Your Parents About Sex, A Guide to a Touchy Subject. So it's basically the, the Christian's guide to learning about sex. Um, so we found him, and then we went to, I guess the next one was Oregon, when we went to film the Silver Ring thing. They were in Oregon at the time, uh, but they traveled the whole country, 
and uh, they go into these public schools in the evenings and either charge like a 10 or $15 cover for the evening. The one that we went to was actually a, a free event and, um, and had a lot of merchandise. So they're, they're a pretty big business and um, basically the alternative to comprehensive sex education. We got a quick yeah. giveaway t shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, also the pregnancy care centers. Uh, oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Pregnancy care center also funds the Silver Ring events, mm -hmm. and so even though the Silver Ring um, is not receiving any federal funding now, they are sort of through the pregnancy care centers, which do receive federal funding. So then they fund um, the events at the public schools. <coughs> I can tell you Nevada's um, accepts abstinence only until marriage funding. Uh, they did up until um, the uh, Obama administration. And the, the majority of that money goes to the crisis pregnancy centers, who in turn sell their curricula from focus on the family to um, the school districts um, with the absence only until marriage, your penis will fall off if you have, um, if you masturbate, that kind of scary curricula. Um, is what the, is how they raise their funds. I'm pretty sure it doesn't, just so in case any of you are. <laughs> 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 That's right. <laughs> just because you bring that up, we, we had a series of questions that we asked every interview because we didn't know where we were going to go at the moment. So we asked every single interview what they thought about masturbation. And we were, when we were interviewing the Silver Ring thing, people, people involved in the event and also attending the event. Uh, so, like, all of them were, you can't do it, it's not right, you know, it's, it's against how they will fall off. Yeah, and then we had one girl who said, not not until marriage can you masturbate. So that was kind of interesting. But, yeah, so. <laughs> Jesse, what training have you had in filmmaking? 